The idea behind the six degrees of Kevin Bacon applies not only to actors in Hollywood, but also to a variety of interesting scientific phenomena. Stay tuned for the fun side as well as the science and mathematics of networks. Just how small of a world is it? As a result of a very few highly connected individuals, most of us are just a few handshakes from any other person in the world. Here are some everyday examples. Two random Americans can mail a letter to one another through an average of five intermediate contacts. Nearly any actor in Hollywood can be linked to Kevin Bacon through five or fewer co-actors. You can navigate from one website to any other by clicking on an average of only 19 links. The living world is rife with examples of small world networks. Here the neural network of this soil dwelling roundworm is illuminated by green fluorescent protein. The protein interaction network of the fruit fly is illustrated in this computer-generated image. How is it that such large networks can be connected through so few links? In each of these examples, a few highly connected hubs bridge the network, shrinking the number of connections required to connect any two nodes. Now let's introduce the six degrees. The rules of the game are very simple. Somebody names an actor, and you have to link them to Kevin Bacon in less than six steps through actors that worked in a movie with someone who acted with Kevin Bacon. Let's play the game. This is Ronald Reagan in his greatest role as president in which he inaugurated a quarter century of nearly unbroken economic growth. He was also an actor. Ronald Reagan's Bacon number is two. Let's calculate it. Kevin Bacon has a Bacon number of zero because he's Kevin Bacon, the center of the universe. Eddie Albert of Green Acres fame had a cameo in the big picture with Kevin Bacon starring as Nick Chapman giving Eddie Albert a Bacon number of one. Ronald Reagan was narrator of the 1961 film The Young Doctors, which starred Eddie Albert as Dr. Charles Dornberger, giving Ronald Reagan a Bacon number of two. You may be wondering at this point whether Kevin Bacon is indeed the most well-connected actor. Surprisingly, he's not even in the top 500. In fact, it does not matter much which actor is chosen as the nominal center of the universe. The game works with any reasonably well-connected actor. Here's a table of the top 10 most connected actors with their center number, which is the average number of links to every other actor in the internet movie database. Kevin Bacon's current center number is 2.95, which places him at 507th in the all-time listing. The idea behind six degrees of separation is actually not new. In his 1909 Nobel lecture, Guglielmo Marconi calculated that it would take six radio transmitters to cover the inhabited globe. In 1929, Friedrich Carinthi wrote the short story Langshimak, Chain Links, which claims that we are all connected through acquaintances by six links. In 1969, Stanley Milgram performed a now famous social psychology experiment in which he asked random individuals in Omaha, Nebraska and Wichita, Kansas to pass a letter to an individual they had never met in Boston, Massachusetts by mailing the letter to someone who might know the recipient. On average, it took 5.5 steps. John Guar wrote the play Six Degrees of Separation in 1990, which was made into a movie in 1993. In 1994, Craig Fast, Brian Turtle, and Mike Ginelli created Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. To describe networks, we use the language of graph theory. Nodes can re represent individuals, actors, neurons, proteins, or anything else in the physical world. The connections between the nodes are called edges. These connections may represent acquaintance, co-appearance in a movie, a synapse between two neurons, or a physical interaction between two proteins or between a protein and a DNA sequence. The degree of a node is the number of edges or connections for that node. A hub is a very well-connected node. Not all naturally occurring networks are small world, unlike the organic structure of human relationships which feature a small number of very well-connected individuals who vastly lower the number of connections between distant people. Minerals have a lattice structure in which two ions far apart in the structure cannot be connected by a small number of connections. In a lattice, each ion is connected only to its neighbors, but not to any other ion more distant in the structure. As the crystal lattice grows, the average distance between nodes increases rapidly. In contrast, as a scale-free network grows, certain nodes called hubs become very highly connected, thus keeping the average number of connections between nodes constant, even at very large network sizes. The principle that describes this growth process is called preferential attachment. Scale-free networks are the most common network type found in nature. Degree distribution in a scale-free network follows a power law. The fraction of nodes with k edges is proportional 
to k raised to the negative gamma. The effect of gamma, the decay constant, is that as the degree of the nodes increases, the proportion of such nodes decreases precipitously. This produces a long-tailed distribution as depicted here. On the left side are the many nodes with few contacts, which are very high in proportion to the few nodes with many contacts located in the long tail stretching to the right. Those few nodes toward the right side of the graph are the hubs. The property of exponential decay results in the data forming a straight line on a log-log plot. Linked is an excellent resource if you'd like to learn more about networks and the mathematics that describes them. Many people who don't consider themselves math lovers are surprised to find out how much they like discrete mathematics, which describes networks and computer code. Most people learn only continuous mathematics stopping with calculus, sadly never having the opportunity to sample discrete mathematics. Here is the all-time champion of discrete mathematics books. Few mathematics books may manage to entertain as well as this one truly a laugh a page. Networks are not the only phenomena that follow a power law distribution. Fractal dimension also follows a power law. Stay tuned to this channel for a super fun future episode examining the science of fractals through art. Click the more info in the upper right box for links to network sites on the internet.